So it's going to be very, very interesting. I request all of you to kindly keep your audio on mute. If you have any questions, you may ask them at the end of the program. Right. So we now begin with the school prayer by Malati Janaki Raman. Right. Am I audible now? I think I was. Yeah. Still I know. No, we can't. <laughs> yeah. You can't. Can... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'll start okay. with the school prayer. Thank you, Malati. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, hidden light. Vibrant in O oh, hidden life, vibrant in every atom, O oh, hidden light shining in every creature, O oh, hidden love embracing all in oneness. May each who feels himself as one with thee know he is also one with every other. We can't hear you, uh, Saju. You muted yourself, Saj. Okay. Thank you so much, Palti. We now start yeah. with the Gayatri Mantra. Right. I'll start with the Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Diyoyona Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Diyoyona Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yona Prachodayat Om Shanti 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 Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Brityoma Amritangamaya Om Shanti 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 We now have the Zoroastrian prayer by Freni. Thank you, ma. Shri Pak Dadar Auramazdani Madad Hojoji. Gorje Kore Avajian, Park of Shun and Shahe Paredun, Bapak Beran. Okay, now. We have the Christian prayer by Ramesh. Exactly. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Ramesh. We now have a Sikh prayer by Gulu Adwani. Ikunka Satnam Kartapurk Nirpa Nirve Akal Murat Joni Saban Gur Prasad Jap. Bring the bag and put it in five minutes. Afterwards, Alti. Anaka ho se bhi sach. Soche soch na ho vai. Je soche lakhwa. Chupa chup na ho vai. Je lai raha libtaad. Bukhiya bukh na utri. Je banna puriya bhaar. 
सह सियाणा पालक हो एक न चले नाल किव सचियारा हो किव कूरे तुटे पाल हुक्म रजाई चल रहा नानक लिखिया वाहगुरु जी का खालसा वाहगुरु जी की फतेह बोले सो निहाल सत श्री अकाल थैंक यू गुलू and now i request mr janaki ram to kindly introduce our esteemed speaker good evening fellow satsangis actually all of us know colonel arun malhotra but there are so many aspects of him which even i also came to know while reading his bio data because he is such a humble person colonel arun malhotra is a military veteran having served for over 30 years in active combat roles both as a paratrooper and as a black cat commando in areas like kashmir and assam where which are all terrorists infested he has had the privilege of working closely with prime minister rajiv gandhi he has attended the military police school as an instructor and a trainer after army service he has also served as vphr in one software company and as director operations in another software company and under his leadership and his involvement both these companies were migrated from usa and now they are established in india naturally with all his experience in army and then in corporates uh, he is a very sought after speaker on topics like leadership and then uh, etiquette and grooming career planning and uh, various other associate uh, various other related topics of management in prestigious institutions like iim ibm hal dr ambedkar institutions and many other places he is also one of the regular contributor invited by times of india to write articles he is the second of four generations of malhotra family devotee with over 40 years of experience with exposure to swami Satya Sai Baba. He has had several interactions with Swami. He was invited to organize sports day program, participate and speak at several trayee sessions. Of course, he will explain what is trayee sessions during his talk time show. He was invited to conduct a one-year de-addiction program in the rural villages of Karnataka. i think maybe you should also make a visit to bihar and address the chief minister instead of punishing people they should be taught how to get de addicted the author was privileged to be swami ji's instrument in motivating and inviting senior officers i'm reading from his book of the army to swami's presence and has had several personal interviews and materializations over the years He has also been invited by the Trust Radio Sai to record his experiences for the archives. He is, of course, with all his outstanding achievements, he is no surprise that he is a recipient of a lifetime golden achievement award and excellence award for commendable service to our nation. So, with that, I am sure we all had some. little bit of divinity at play in each one of our lives but we would like to know more about that how divinity at play because all of us are brought to school of ancient wisdom by divinity with play only and we are the introduction to mom and is a so with that i now hand over to sajini thank you so much mr janaki ram really and now colonel we really look forward to your talk so it's over to you uh <clears throat> thank you sajini and thank you jankiram and uh, a good evening friends once again 
it's my privilege to uh, speak to this August gathering. There are how many? 22, and I'm sure by the time another five minutes down the line, we should be around 40. It's my privilege to speak to this August gathering of School of Ancient Wisdom. I, as a part of my family, we became members of the school in our quest to seek what we feel is universal truth. And that's what the school is all about. And of course, this evening, we would have a couple of guests too, who have logged in to understand how divinity plays even in our well-blended life. I, as I said earlier, I'm not new to the School of Ancient Wisdom since I've been associated with it for, uh, um, for I suppose, uh, around 15 years now, though my participation and attendance has been intermittent. Sorry for that. Most of you old timers at the school would have known my mother and my wife. Yuck. God bless their souls. Time has taken its toll. I also thank uh, once again uh, John Kiram for the introduction that he has given just now. Aniket, are you there? Swati? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I can hear you, Sajini. Yeah. I am here, ma'am. You are wanting it to be recorded. I don't know if the recording has started. Yes, or not. sir. Recorded. It is getting recorded. Okay. I thought that's why Sajini wanted to check whether Aniket is there or not. Well, anyway, getting back to the subject. You see, this evening, over the next 80 to 90 minutes, I intend sharing my thoughts on how divinity plays with us in our daily lives. It plays with you. It plays with me. It plays with everybody. Some acknowledge it. Some let it go as a coincidence. I treat that as divinity at play. I'm not going to speak on any... Speak on any... Uh, somebody, somebody said something? Somebody said something. Yeah. No, no, carry, carry on. on. I'm not going Very to speak, I'm not going to speak on any deep subjects of Vedic philosophy or subconscious or other such serious stuff. I am going to speak from my heart to touch your hearts. I'll speak the language of the heart, my own experiences. Now, before I begin with the book, the first truth that I learned from my several conversations with Baba was that all of us give different names to our family divinity. Some call him Shiva, Rama, some call Krishna, some call Balaji, some call Shidi Baba, some call Christ, some Nanak, and there's so many names we give. But what is beyond doubt is that God is one. His names are many. In fact, he says, Baba says, if you look for me in a stone, I'm there. You look for me in a statue, I'm there. Look towards the sky, I'm there. And you think I'm there. In that stone, statue, the forest, the sky, the mandir, or wherever you go in search for him, he asked me, do you find me there? I said, yes, Swami, I do find you there. He said, no. He said, no, I am in your heart, though you think that I am in that mandir, the church, the statue, the stone, the forest, the sky or wherever. He said, no, I'm in your heart. It is You see me there because you are seeing me with open eyes. See me with your eyes closed and I'm right there. You don't have to look into the sky or you don't have to go to a forest or you don't have to go to a mandir or you don't have to go anywhere. I'm right there. That was one of my early lessons that I got and it figures in my book, Divinity at Play. Sajini mentioned about my book, Divinity at Play, recording my experiences and certain miracles of divine with me and my family. All these defy logic. Uh, let's have a look at slide two, Varsha. Sure, sir. No, slide two. Yes. No, uh, yes. Now, here is a book. No, slide two. Yes. Now, here is a book that has recently come into the market. It's available on Amazon. It's available in the bookshop in Puttaparthi. It's available in several bookshops in USA. It's found its way into South Africa. And of course, it's there all over India. 
and I'm so happy when I get a feedback that this has given them goosebumps. And somebody said this brought tears in my eyes. I think Baba's message, or rather the message of divinity, is being progressed into our hearts in general. Now, when I wrote the manuscript of my book, I wanted to seek divine blessings and to assure me that what I'm doing is right or not. Now, this, uh, why I was seeking blessings at this moment was because this is a new realm of the unknown for me. I have not written a book earlier. And in that, spending over a lakh of rupees to get this book printed required uh, a, a lot of determination. Now, at that stage, at that stage, I wrote a manuscript. I took the advice of Dr. Rema Ramachandran, who is again sitting here and listening to us. She's my editor. And she said, yes, Arun, go ahead. I'm going to help you in whatever you want to do. I contacted Dr. Mohan, who is one of the world's top diabetologists, and he's a member of the trust. He said, I am with you. I'll be the first one to read your book. I said, fine. I got down to writing. It took me one year, more than one year to write this book. And when I had written the manuscript, I wanted Baba's blessings on it because it was a new experience for me. I took this manuscript to a mandir here called Gita Anjali Mandir in the cantonment. There's a Baba's Mandir and I placed my book inside the mandir at Baba's feet on his charan. And I left it there and it came out of the mandir. In the evening, I got a call from somebody that there's so much of vibhuti that has come on the book. And you can see it now. Varsha has already shown it on slide. There's so much of vibhuti came in. It, this was lying on a tray. The tray was full of vibhuti. On top, you can see Baba's lower portion. There was a photograph I had kept with it and then handkerchief with it. It was vibhuti all over. Here was a signal for me. Yes, son, go ahead. I am with you. The moral of the story is, he is always with us. Our divine is always with us, provided we are with him. I prayed, he answered, and the end result is what I am talking to you about today. Experiencing divinity in our lives is an interesting subject to talk about. Since I have experienced him play with me all my life. When Baba was in human form, we as a family have had opportunities to talk to him, to talk with him, to laugh with him, to discuss personal issues with him, to discuss public matters with him, to discuss politics with him. In short, I considered him as my friend, philosopher and guide. Once he asked me, what am I? And like a stupid me, I did not say God. I said, sir, you're my friend. He nodded with a smile. I said, sir, you're my friend, philosopher and guide. I said, sir. And thereafter, for so many years, he kept addressing me as sir. Those are the small little issues of our equation with divinity, which is in our hearts. Now, just show a slide four, Varsha. Talking about friend, philosopher and guide. Here are just, it's just a, a one slide. In case you want to follow it up on YouTube, the moment you try, uh, the moment you type Colonel Arun Malota, you'll find five, six YouTubes on different issues. It may be the Constitution of India on which I spoke last. Before that, I had spoken on joining the armed forces, and there are three or four of them pertaining to Baba, a friend, philosopher, and a guide. I thought I'll just inform you that these exist. Uh, let's proceed further. <clears throat> now, the next slide that Varsha is showing us is about money matters. Thank you, Varsha. You could switch this off. Now, right. Now, this, oh, okay. I'm talking of money matters. Now, this happened in the mid 70s. My parents were living peacefully retired lives in Delhi. They were totally into social service and many activities for the alleviation of distress amongst the poor. One such place was a, a big hospital in South Delhi, uh, uh, the Teen Dial Upadhyaya Hospital. For those of you who are from Delhi would be knowing, it's a major hospital. They used to go and do service there. They would visit this hospital twice a week 
in their old rickety ambassador car to, till the time the cost of petrol began to bite into my father's meager pension now at that stage they were going every time and my father would generally complain to his, to my mother that look let's go in a uh, in a cycle rickshaw those days cycle rickshaws were quite prevalent they said let's go in a cycle rickshaw to the hospital and back why are you spending so much of money on petrol remember petrol costs now 2 rupees a liter i mean it yeah 2 rupees a liter or was it 1 rupee 50 paisa a liter it was expensive because at that stage my father was retired and he was having a pension of 2000 rupees a month so he was a senior textile engineer and an official getting a good salary but those days the retirement pension benefits were not much so he complained he craved now uh, my mother she said kya kitna paisa lag gaya how much money do you spend every month my father calculated and he said look i spent 400 rupees every month just on petrol so my mother said oh koi baat nahi baba denge so my father said oh baba has got nothing better to do than to give you money she said nahi nahi if you are craving that uh, you don't have money but i must go in a car is more comfortable we are getting aged we are retired we have to go in a car and i'm sure baba will give 400 rupees the conversation finished the next day my mother like all other ladies she was cleaning her godrej ka almara her steel cupboard in the steel cupboard those days there used to be a small uh, 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 locker there used to be a small locker in which a woman invariably kept all, all her jewelry and whatever so she was dusting the room and then she wanted to clean up the cupboard now when she cleaned up the cupboard when she opened the well uh, to when she opened the uh, uh, the locker um she found a small velvet purple pouch small pouch typical that ladies wear and keep it tied to their uh, uh, sarees and when they are walking around along with the keychain she was surprised that this this sachet doesn't belong to me this um, uh, uh, pouch doesn't belong to me but it was there in her almara she picked it up opened it and lo and behold what do you see four crisp 100 rupee notes straight from baba's treasury imagine she got goosebumps she talked of 400 rupees a day earlier and she said baba denge and my father bullied her and said you think baba's got no better job to do than to give you money like this don't be stupid and here you are what my mother's implicit faith did the divinity in her provided her 400 rupees 100 crisp notes and i know them and because i saw them uh the miracle doesn't finish here 20 years there after was it 25 years there after when i was in bangalore and baba was during his summer vacations he used to come to during the summers he used to come to trey brindavan that is at white field he had once called me over to his sanctum sanctorum and there he asked me to speak to all the students and certain selected guests and i spoke to him i asked him what do i speak and he said speak on anything i said can i speak on uh, a miracle he said yes bolo kuch bhi bolo i spoke i narrated the whole thing and there i said and when my mother opened the thing there she saw a purple a velvet purple sachet a pouch lying there she was amazed baba immediately corrected me he was sitting next to me on the jula he said purple nahi tha it was blue now the ego of a colonel got hurt but then remember uh, baba was in my heart and he is my friend philosopher and guide and there talking in front of hundreds of people i could not say baba i know it it was purple he said blue and i said yes blue color <clears throat> thereafter when i came out my pay, my mother and my wife they were waiting outside because i was the driver of the car and i asked my mother 
I said that I spoke about that uh, miracle of 400 rupees and you found a sachet there, a pouch there. And she said, yes. I said, what color was it? She said, blue. Now look at this divinity was at play. He made me ask her and prove it to me that what I was thinking was all cockite. It was a blue sachet and Baba remembered it 25 years after he produced it for my mother. Is this not divinity at play? The issue is not about rupees 400. But implicit faith in your divine. Imagine she is saying Baba will give money. And then Baba gives her money. It was something which none of us could fathom. My father also could not quite understand how this happened. But that was a fact. Our family divinity is omnipresent. Like he is for you. Your family divinity is also omnipresent. He is concerned with your requirements and he gives in. He was concerned with the requirements of my father and mother and he gave in. Divinity was at play. But Baba says, you take the first step and I will take a hundred towards you. You take the first step to come near me and I will take a hundred to reach you. But unfortunately, that first step is lacking in very many of us. That was the moral of this particular miracle. I'll now take on another miracle. Uh, pardon me, I've got to go slow because the time is at a premium and I had selected for my book at random this morning about four or five miracles which are one better than the other. Of course, all miracles are equally good. Right. Now, let's have a look at the next one. Uh, Varsha, can we have the next slide? Yes. Okay, you can switch it off. Death reversed. Now, this sounds very peculiar, but we've been a witness to it. This incident is of the early 80s, when I was still in uniform and serving at different places in the country. My mother suggested at one time through a letter that we visit Puttaparthi <coughs> during an ensuing annual leave of mine, during one of my annual leaves. I came to Delhi on annual leave. Tickets were purchased. But for some reason, my father had to drop out. Now I had to go. I was on leave, staying at Rajori Garden. That was the place in Delhi where my father, after retirement, had a house and we stayed there. <coughs> I borrowed a motorcycle from my brother-in-law and I had to go from Rajori Garden to the railway station to return one ticket. And so that we have only three tickets, me, my wife and my mother, along with two tiny tots who didn't really have to purchase the ticket. I passed through uh, uh, Rajinder Nagar and I met with an accident. Motorcycle exhaust is very hot for the youngsters who know how to drive a motorcycle and the motorcycle fell on me. The exhaust fell on my rear portion of my leg. It burned the leg. It burned, the, it burned my uh, trouser. It burned my leg. Blood was oozing, pus was oozing, people came, they ran from all over, they picked up the motorcycle, put it to one side, they picked me up and they made me sit on the side berm. I was in my senses, I had not gone unconscious. I asked them, Koi doctor ke pas leke chalo. Divinity came to play. The person looked behind me and he said, Kesab, aapka accident to doctor ke pas hua hai. There's a clinic right here, two yards away. I mean, I was, I fell down and they made me sit at the door of a clinic. Imagine a person needing first aid immediate and the doctor was provided by the divine on the spot. I went there, he gave me injections and what all he had to do, he patched me up and I was in my senses. He gave me uh, uh, some tablets and some injections and he said, you can go and you got to go to the hospital. I had to take a decision. Should I carry on to return the ticket and then come home? Or should I go straight to the hospital? Because had I gone to the hospital, uh, I would not have been able to fulfill my mother's dreams of going to Puttaparthi because she would have obviously been sympathetic to me and would have said, no, we will cancel the visit. I kept quiet with all that situation where I was in, in that emergency situation, I started my motorcycle. The motorcycle started. I started and I went that seven, eight kilometers, nine kilometers to the railway station and I canceled this ticket and I came back with my uh, thing oozing. I went home. 
They were happy that the ticket has been closed and we all set to go. I showed my problem to my mother. She said, Amara Buddha said, don't know, we'll not go. She said, no, we have got to go to Baba and Baba will cure you. You don't need to go to a doctor. I assure you. I agreed with her. My father said, you are being stupid. I said, no, neither is your wife being stupid, my mother, and neither am I being stupid. We have faith in God and God is going to look after us. Four days passed, five days passed, and thereafter, one or two bandages, and then we went by train. I couldn't afford a, a flight at that stage. We went by train to Puttaparthi. Now, when we were traveling at night, passing through uh, UP, you have uh, you know, urchins and young boys throwing stones at the train. To get some whiff of fresh air, my mother had lifted up the window pane of the uh, compartment. Two big stones which are lying on the railway side, they came and hit her on her knee. A 60 years old woman and threw her sari, tore the sari and the stones hit her. She yelled out, but there's nothing we could do. We just got up. It was around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. We got up. We quickly, I found blood oozing all over and she was not able to move her, um, um, uh, her knees. Guess what? In the next apartment, there was a doctor traveling with first aid kit. Hey, imagine a doctor traveling in the first aid kit in the neighboring compartment came rushing in along with the first aid kit and he and his wife, who was also a doctor, they rendered first aid to my mother and they said, once you reach Bangalore, please report to the hospital. Now we had my wife looking after a bandaged mother, a mother-in-law. She was looking after a bandaged husband. A child, Ashish, was, I think, six years old or five years old and my son Pooja, she was around two and a half to three years old in the Gudi. When we went to put up, when we went to Bangalore, we came to know that Baba is not in Puttaparthi, he is in Whitefield. Now here's another problem. We caught the next train limping and we went to Whitefield, limping. My wife doing everything for us, including lifting my bags also. Master Kuli. When we went to the gate, we were told that Baba is not there. He is going to put Puttaparthi. Now what do we do? We were in very bad situation. What happened? Lo and behold, two young boys, Baba's students who study there in Baba's college in, Putta, in uh, Whitefield, they came running across and they said, you are injured. I said, yes, my mother is also injured. They picked up her luggage. They picked up luggage. They picked up the children. Then they took us to a room where first stage was rendered. I said, look, my, my injury is oozing with pus. It is stinking. My mother has an open wound on her knee. They said, sir, it is our honor to look after you and to make sure that you are fit to go to Puttaparthi. They did not let me touch my wound. They did not let me clear my wound. They did not let my mother clear her wound. They said, we will do it ourselves. This is our contribution to society or whatever. Words to that effect. Now the point was, it was getting evening and how do we go? They said, sir, you will have to first go to uh, um, Bangalore and then catch a train. I said, oh my God, one more day and in agony. And then again, divinity came into play. One student came running in. Are you wanting to go to Puttaparthi? I said, yes. And he said, there's a bus standing outside with no passengers in it. And it is going to Puttaparthi. I said, how come? The other student said, how come? They said, this is a bus which has been chartered to go to Puttaparthi to bring uh, 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 the Seva Dal from there back to Bangalore. He said, I will help you. Two persons helped me. Two persons helped my mother. One person picked up my luggage. One person picked up my daughter, Puja, in her godi. And my mother and my wife and my uh, son, they take down. We got into the vehicle and in nine hours, or uh, no, in four hours or so, we were there. To cut the whole story short, I've not finished. The actual thing has yet to come. We spent the night there. It was with a lot of difficulties. I'll cut it. You can read it in the book. Uh, thereafter, next day morning, we went for bhajan. Next day morning, we couldn't go for bhajans. We were in a very bad situation. In the evening when we went to for bhajans, Baba didn't even look at us. The next day, Baba looked at my mother. He was a little serious. Nothing happened. In the evening, we received a telegram 
and the telegram came from my father in Delhi saying, uh, the, the, the Seva Dal, somebody came and told us, you got a telegram and we went to the post office to pick up the telegram. And in the telegram, it was for my mother to say that your brother Vidhi Prakash Shuri has died. He was a renowned India's, one of the top footballers of New Delhi heroes. He had died. Now my mother said, look at this. Injury there, injury here, Baba not there, Baba has yet to see us and here my, my brother, whom she loved a lot, uh, has died. What do we do? She said, my God, how can that be possible? I said, look, uh, we got to take a decision. Should we go back? She said, no, I can't go back. I want to fight it out with Baba. Why this has happened? I respected my mother a lot and I said, okay, we will. We tended to ourselves and the next day, my mother sat and wanted to plead to Baba. Baba looked at her, blessed her, walked away. Nothing happened. I asked my mother, should we go back? She said, no, I have to fight it out with Baba. How dare he does this to me? My brother is younger to me and he has died. How come? She loved her brother a lot. Uh, I said, look, uh, how can, uh, what can he do now? He can only bless you and give you vibhuti. That's at best. She said, I don't know what he does, but I'm going to complain to Baba that this is not on. He called us, we have come, and then a telegram follows, my brother has died. In the evening, again, he came. He blessed her and walked away. The next day morning, when Baba came, he blessed her, gave her some vibhuti. And my mother, instead of speaking, she started crying. You see, that's emotions, women's emotions. When you see the God in front of you, you begin to cry. That's all. No words come out. And that's what happened. As soon as the uh, bhajans finished and we got up to go to our rooms, a person came running in to say that you have another telegram uh, 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 in, the, in the office. We said, now who has died? Now what has happened? I hope my father is okay. And we went there and we found a telegram. And the telegram read from my father to my mother, your brother Vidhi Prakash Suri is alive. He was mistaken. Hindustan Times had mistaken him for Vidhi Prakash Suri while there was another person called VP Suri who had died. And there was an obituary on my father, on my brother, on my the mother's brother, which was deleted and a fresh obituary was issued after 48 hours. Imagine a person coming back to life because my mother said, I am going to fight it out with Baba. How has he taken away my brother when I'm not there in Delhi? Now, what do you have to say to this? <clears throat> Imagine the country's number one newspaper, Hindustan Times that time, Times of India was non-existing. It publishes an obituary along with a write-up of the deceased. Yet my mother with a pure heart and love for God, she demanded a miracle to resurrect a dead brother. And the death was reversed. Miracle happened. Divinity was at play. Now here's a case of having implicit faith in our divinity. In spite of all the worldly upheavals and discomforts, my mother felt that we must go and fulfill God's wish that we visit him and have his darshans. And so we went. We experienced the unbelievable, the unbelievable where a death got reversed. So I say, what do you have to say to this? Unbelievable. If you want to look at the, if you want to read the whole thing, you need to go into my book and read it. Uh, I, 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 I have witnessed the whole thing. And therefore, to that extent, it is very, very elaborately recorded in the book. Read it. I'm taking a five seconds breather just to get ready for the next one, which is the light-hearted one. Varshita, are you awake? Can we have the next slide? No, the first one before this. Yes. Yes. Now here, most of you will not know what I've written. La Paloma. This was a Spanish orchestra musical score of the century. Let us now listen to it.
thank you thank you that's it you've been so varsha has been so much carried away by the lilting music that you forgot to switch it off okay yeah thank you uh, uh, thank you varsha <clears throat> now let me narrate to you this experience of about 150 years old spanish orchestra score being played by a military band in front of baba La, just in case you don't know very many of you in fact would not be knowing la paloma is the name of this number and this is the most recorded song in the history of music unbelievable in the history of european music and this incident happened just before i retired in the 90s during my last stint in bangalore i was here now what happened i was in office and a seva dal somebody rang me up saying that colonel malhotra is it possible for you to arrange for a military band i had my own military band from the military police also i said what do you want it for if it is for a public show yes he said yes it is for a public show but it is to for at white field for baba's pleasure i said look baba is treated as a religious as a spiritual head and to that extent it can draw in an adverse comment no he rang up after 15 minutes he said it is required for the listening pleasure of 2000 and more than 2000 devotees and for a simultaneously a wedding function at tray vrindavan white field i said yes then it is possible <clears throat> now the band was arranged i arranged the asc band the asc was the next unit next to me where the complete band was available while in my unit in military police five or seven people had already gone on leave that band was available and i said confirm to them on a particular date i asked the band to practice we made out a list of about 15 to 7 no we made out a list of about 18 to 20 musical scores english and hindi and i said i asked the band master can you be able to play all this he said yes sir i said oh i forgot to add one more let's add one more the 20th one at serial 15 i added la paloma he said sab hum to baba ke paas jata hai unko kya malum ye europe ka band ke bare mein orchestra ke bare mein i said are humne 19 ka 20 kar diya bas 20 number hai agar baba ko nahi pata to aur koi bolega aur koi karne ke liye hum wohi play karega whether it was bande mataram or it was jan ganman or it was whichever and uh, it carried on we all went now when we went there <clears throat> when we went there the band was placed at the right place and i was also in uniform on one side we were waiting for the bhajans for the darshans to finish no 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 just uh, just a minute varsha yeah so uh, when we carry, when when the whole thing when the darshans finished bhajans finished baba came out from wherever the darshans were he came to but before he came to me one sevadal came running to me ke sir aap aarti karenge baba ka i said yes why not why not in 30 seconds i don't know where he collected a rose from where he collected a tray from where he collected this from where did he collect that aarti stuff from all those were provided in one hour one minute and 30 seconds and given to me baba came he saw me from a distance and he said wait abhi aata he went in for the marriage function or whatever that was and we were waiting outside by then the complete 2000 2000 to 3000 people gents and ladies got together and they knew that there is something going to happen here mark my words 2000 to 3000 people were there hanging all around wherever they could to see it i'll come to this a little later after 10 minutes baba came and he came to me i saluted him and then he said band ko lekar aaya i said yes baba uh, aapke liye he said kya play karega i said i showed him the list of 20 numbers and i told him swami baba i have got a list of 20 scores that these chefs can play in which serial 17 was uh, uh, serial 17 was la paloma 
He looked at it and in five seconds, not even five seconds, in three seconds, he pointed his finger at La Paloma and he said, Ha, ye acha lagta hai aapko, ye play karega. I was amazed. The divinity was at play. I said, Swami uh, La Paloma? He said, Ha, bhoat acha Europe ka number hai. And I stayed where I told the band, go ahead. They took them 10, 10 seconds to turn the pages of their military, of their uh, musical score sheets. And straight away, the band began to play La Paloma, the tune that you just heard. When, the, when it started, he looked to the left where there were so many people there. Varsha, now can we have this slide? Yes. Uh, is this maximum size, Varsha? Am I seeing a small one or everybody is seeing a small size? One second, sir. I'll just share the mic. Can you increase it? I want to show a particular face in the audience. Sure. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Is that the large? No, it's not the largest. This is the largest, sir. Oh, this is the, but in the morning, you showed me a larger one. Or am I seeing small when your participants are seeing larger size? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Yes, so yes. I presume you no, we can larger. also make it larger on our phone. No, no problem. Okay, fine. We are made it large. Own. Yes, sir. Now here's me performing Arti to Baba. The band is as you're looking at it, the band is the band is on your right. The band is on your right. The band is on your right. Now behind me, in the far distance, you can see a foreigner where an arrow is coming on. Now, here is a former. Believe you me, I came to know later that this lady was, Baba was looking at her when La Paloma was being played. She later came to me with tears in her eyes and shaking with shock that uh, Colonel, she said, Colonel, I am the granddaughter of the composer of La Paloma in Spain 150 years ago. This oh, how interesting. 150 mm. years ago, my grandfather composed this for the world. And since then till now, 150 years, this is the most recorded uh, 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 the musical score in the history in Europe. I This gave me goosebumps. It had a tear in my eye. Divinity played. Baba looked at me, smiled, and he walked away. When he walked away, I had already practiced that we got to play Aarti. Swami, as soon as I played Aarti thereafter, he turned back and he told the audience that 2,000 people whom you can see in the background, Aarti, Are, military ko Aarti aata play karna. Baba Kun, he acted like a normal human being, thinking that military is God's own and they don't know Aarti and they don't know Hindi and they don't know rituals. Not realizing that we are a part of the same breed that he bears with us. Imagine, one miracle after that happened at, during La Paloma. And that lady thereafter went back to, imagine she came all the way from Spain to India to have Baba's Darshan. To have Baba's Darshan. Ha, to have Baba's Darshan. And what do you see? Her family background is all at this play. Imagine, Baba may be only 8th class pass. He may have been born and brought up in Prati, but he is aware of the symphonies of Europe. He knew what was in my mind. Making me happy was his aim then. And he pointed at La Paloma because that was my favorite score. When I was a young officer, we used to dance every night before going to bed on this score. He also ensured that the granddaughter of the composer was here at Prati. In that precise moment when La Paloma was to be played. Divinity was at play on large scale in front of 2,500 people. Or there were more, I don't know. It's a very wild guess. Right. Here's another one. Next Varsha. Resurrection. Witnessing a dead man coming back to life. Being a witness. Now here is, again, I'm going back to Delhi, sometimes in the 80s, all the, see, whatever stories I'm telling you are just very brief, all in five minutes and seven to 10 minutes uh, duration. You have to read the book to understand 
what all happened during those miracles. Now, here's a miracle about Delhi. I was posted in a field area somewhere. My father was the president of a Seva Dal Samiti. My mother was the head of the women's wing of the Seva Dal. And every Sunday, they used to go to a particular place where to offer their Narayan Seva and to sing bhajans for the orphans and uh, uh, destitutes. Yes, to the destitutes at a place called Rajori Garden. In case uh, Ashok is here, he will guide us onto it. Uh, but I'm not, not, just a minute, there's somebody troubling me. Ah, Khalid, Khalid, I'm on Zoom, I'll ring you. I'll ring you. Anji. So, my father had a car. They would always go along in a car early morning at 5 o'clock from for uh, early morning uh, uh, praises of Baba, followed by bhajans, followed by Naren Seva, and then come back in the afternoon. They would leave a room at about 5 o'clock so that by 5.30 my father's there and they would organize the whole thing and get it ready. My father, well, they got late. Uh, Rajori Garden to uh, uh, um, what was that name of the place? Um, Janakpuri. Rajori Garden to Janakpuri is about five, six kilometers, six to seven kilometers. My father pressed the accelerator and he drove on because he was late. He wanted to make it on time. Now they were driving along the main highway, main road, uh, uh, the main road uh, separating Rajori Garden with another township. It is one way. There's a, there, there, there are, the, you can't see the other side of the road. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, a cyclist, that's early morning, five o'clock, lots of people are carrying their lotas and going around, hiding behind trees. And simultaneously, the newspaper people are there, loaded with newspapers for the Rajori Garden locality in thousands. One such boy with a thousand newspapers on his uh, handle and on the rear of his uh, bicycle. All of a sudden, he came from the other side of the road through the bushes. He came right in front of my father and damn, there was a bang on clash. The body fell up, went six feet up into the air. The cycle went from under the wheels of the car. The body flung onto the windscreen. And by the time my father applied the brake from 70 kilometers or 60 kilometers down to zero, that boy, a sick boy, fell off the car, off the bumper, off the bonnet, off the bumper, and went about five to 10 kilometers ahead, kept rolling, and he was motionless. The newspapers flew all over the countryside. The bicycle was about 30 yards behind out of shape, trampled by the car. There was commotion. My mother yelled, Sairam, 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 Sairam. My father also yelled, Sairam, Sairam, Sairam. The people, almost at that time, 10 to 15 people, 20 people came around and they said, there's a dead body here. He's dead. They tried to wake him. He was dead. They started wondering. A couple of people came to manhandle my father uh, and my mother. My mother said, Sairam, Bachao, Sairam, Bachao. My father said, Sairam, Bachao. The people started an argument as a preliminary for a criminal assault on my father because he was, he had killed somebody. Rash driving. There were eight or ten people around that place, not knowing what to do. Three, four ruffians near my father wanting to assault him. My, fa my parents prayed, Sai Baba, Baba, Bachao, Baba, Bachao. Lo and behold, somebody from behind the bushes in an orange dress came across and he said, Kya ho gaya? Kya ho gaya? to the crowd around that dead body. They said, Is karwale ne kisi ko mar diya. He looked at the body, uh, uh, the, the man in the orange cloth, orange robe. He looked at the bobby, turned around and thereafter went to my, this thing, my, to my father's car and said, Kya ho gaya? He said, Swami, oh, galti ho gaya. Uh, nahin, he said, Ke, uh, he was shell-shocked. There's nothing he could do. The man in the orange robe went back to the dead body. He told everybody, Hat jau, hat jau, thoda dur ho jau, dur ho jau. So, he said, can we lift up the body and take it to one side because there are 50, 70 cars behind. They, they, they want to pass. 
तो ही सेड यू तुम तो पहले पीछे दूर हो जाओ सांस आने दो दिस इज सांस किधर आएगा हो गया नहीं ब्रीद इज डेड दिस ऑरेंज रोब मैन ही पुट इज हैंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ द डेड बॉडी फ्रॉम द हेड टू द बॉडी थ्रू द टू द टोज he put his hand waving it through as if blessing it and he said bachche uth jao tumko kuch nahi hua no action bachche uth jao tumko kuch nahi hua no action uth jao uth jao shabash uth jao and suddenly his eyes opened his feet moved his arms moved bachche kuch nahi hua uth jao uth jao in 10 seconds after the first movement that took place of his eyes they made him sit down once he was seated they now lifted him and took him to one side and there after some cars could move on no cars had not moved on still they took him to one side he was in his senses shell shock then uh, then that uh, man in the orange robe told everybody wo cycle kidhar hai jisme aaya tha they said wo to khatam ho gaya cycle he said nahi dekho kya hai lo and behold when they went to check the cycle the cycle was in working order the wheels which had turned their shapes became again normal wheels the cycle handle became normal they just had to adjust it he told the other five seven people jitna newspaper ikatha ho sakta hai ikatha karo there was total commotion activity was on a man suddenly resurrected new the new the the, the the bicycle brought in rolling handle put in order 100 200 300 i don't know how many whatever news was could be gathered were placed together and given to the boy that man came that man in the golden robe he came to my he came to my father and he said tum jis shubh kaam ke liye ja rahe ho jao lekin dhyan se chalana chahiye aise mat karo my father and mother they said that now that he is alive and baba said jaldi se jao let me press the accelerator and carry on the car was working surprisingly the car was working only the bonnet was out of shape the wind screen got broken but they did not go back my father and mother with their faith in god they went for the narayan seva they went for the nagar sankirtan they went for feeding the poor and thereafter they came back but the only thing that happened was that my father oh, suffered oh. quite a shock for the next one week he could not come out of his room thinking that the police will come and apprehend him divinity played at every stage in this particular newspapers vendor resurrection there was no doubt that baba came and you will not believe it if i tell you that about 7 years there 6 years there uh, uh, 5 to 6 years there after at a particular time during an interview uh, my father had passed away by then my mother was still there uh, in the 80s and uh, uh, baba during an interview said ye aista chalana chahiye tumko bahut tez chalata hai my mother state we understood what he was he was taking us 10 years back but divinity was at play he is always let let's learn was he is always at the devotee's beck and call provided your prayers are genuine and they come from the heart unfortunately most of us are so much worldly wise like me that we only pray from outside and not from inside you pray from inside to god is sitting right there with you one doesn't have to go to a mandir and give one uh, one kilo of mithai and then say baba ye kar do uh, 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 whatever is your divinity uh, krishna uh, shiva whatever and you say one kilo mithai please put me right you don't have to do it right here with you they just yell baba bachao baba bachao baba bachao and baba came running wherever he was and he bachaoed them another miracle if you permit i got a lot of uh, lessons learned to be narrated also but let me just narrate one uh, more that i had uh, or is it two more no one more yes okay uh, varsha back in action hello varsha yes no we finish material ring no. okay switch it off switch it off switch it off come out of it yeah and let me see the faces i find most of you i can't see the faces because you uh, stopped your video uh, anyway not with standing not with standing now i'm going to tell you something again very interesting again bangalore 
Now, this was the time in November 2014. This is the time when our hearts were still heavy and sad with the passing of Sai Baba. He had by then he relinquished his body and he had gone. And this happened in Bangalore in the ASC center where I was at that time. And I, I, I was very fond of golf. I, I play golf quite a lot. There is a very nice golf course there, providing us a lot of fresh air, a good golf course, a good company, and merrymaking and a good exercise. Each time I walk 9.2 kilometers four days a week. So it's good going. It's 70 acres. The area is 70 acres of land. And in that, there are 18 holes. If you walk through 18 holes, uh, you have to walk all over. You have got to literally walk all over. Now, this course, this ASC golf course, this is littered with small forests, trees, undergrowth, wild grass, sand bunkers, lots of water bodies, and a lake. Another preamble to this incident is that during my earlier years, Baba had materialized two rings to me at different times and at different interviews. Uh, uh, I think you should be able to see the two rings that I'm wearing. I'm now going to talk about the golden ring. For this ring, there's another story that is for you to read the book. Now, <clears throat> Now, what I do is when I play, I wear I have to wear a glove for a tight grip of the uh, club head. I want to remove both my rings and put them into a into a pouch in which I keep the golf balls. And I, then I play. One particular day, when I was playing, I played my complete 9.2 holes, uh, 9.2 kilometers, 18 holes. And when I was on my way back, I removed the glove put it in my pocket, I opened the um, uh, uh, pouch and I found only one ring. My uh, my uh, uh, silver ring was there, but this was not there. I said, oh my God, what's happened? I searched all over. I was wet with sweat in five seconds. Baba's materialized wing, ring got lost. How can this happen? I was very restless. I had tears in my eyes. I did not know what to do. Can I walk back nine kilometers? It was getting evening. Agony, frustration, desperation, morose. I could do nothing. I went home. I told my wife. She kept quiet. I couldn't sleep the whole night. At twelve o'clock, she gave me a. At twelve o'clock, she gave me a, um, a sleeping tablet. Ah, uh, where was I? Yes. So um, <clears throat> I took a sleeping tablet. I could not sleep. Next day morning again, I went for the golf. Uh, this was in November 14. Remember? Now, I I informed one shopkeeper. There's only one shopkeeper there who sells golf balls, and I told him. No, he asked me, I said, I ring So he said, he said, Now, for the next 10 days, 15 days, I used to play golf daily, but I couldn't even manage it. I play only four days a week. At my age, I can't walk nine and a half kilometers every day, seven days a week. But for the first seven days after losing my ring, I walked every day, nine kilometers, hardly interested in golf. I was always looking down and walking, looking at every spade of grass that grows there, looking at forests. There are animals there. There are snakes could have taken the thing. There are birds. They could have taken away my ring. There were eagles there. They could have taken away the ring. They could go into a forest. It could have fallen into the lake. There's water flowing. Along with the flow of the water from the stream into the lake, it would have gone into the lake. How do I find out? I just could not. It was looking. It was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Fifteen days, no reaction. Twenty days, no reaction. I would every day sit back and cry. My wife felt that I was having a nervous breakdown, and she tried to tell me that, "Look, don't worry. Baba gave you this ring for a purpose. That purpose has been achieved, whatever it was, and the ring has gone back to its source." 
I said, you can't bully me to this. I don't agree with Baba. I want my ring back. Let Baba tell me he wants my ring back. I will take it out and give it to him. Otherwise, this ring will carry on with me to the cremation grounds. After that, what happens to it? I am not interested. My son, Ashish, he is also watching the whole thing, I think, here. I just saw his name somewhere. He also said the same thing. He says, Dad, what had to happen has happened. I said, no. He said, Baba gave you this ring for a purpose. The purpose has achieved. Uh, the aim has been achieved. So the ring has gone back to the source. And that is why every rational man thinks. I said, no, I want my ring back. He thought I was having a nervous breakdown. They wanted me to go to Puttaparthi. I said, no, I want my ring back. They wanted me to go to Bombay. On a, no, they wanted me to go to Bombay to spend time with uh, my son, Ashish, who was posted there. I said, no, I want my ring back, Baba. I want my ring back. Every day in the Monday morning, afternoon, evening, I would fight it out with Baba. I want my ring back. I used to converse with him. I used to talk with him. I used to cry with him. I used to smile with him. And I said, Baba, this is not fair. Why have you taken away the ring when you've given it to me? Have I become an evil person? Have I become a bad man? My wife said, she consoled me the way she could. She talked to my sister. Look, there's something has gone wrong with your brother. I want help. Can you come over? Or should I show him to a psychiatrist? So they were looking at showing me, taking me to the command hospital psychiatrist to see if something could be done. And I said, no, I want my ring back. I want my ring back. Baba, I want my ring back. Baba, I want my ring back. The whole of November went, no ring. December, no ring. January, no ring. Every day playing golf with a uh, looking down on the grass, I developed a hunchback on my back. I started because I was looking down. Four hours, four hours of walking every day, looking down, hunched back, morose. I lost my sense of humor. I lost my everything that was normal and average in me. January passed, no luck. February passed, no luck. March passed, no luck. Now I was wondering, is it time for me to go to the cremation ground? That is why perhaps as a preliminary, he has taken the ring from me. Or what is the reason? I asked Baba to please explain. Why is it that the ring has been taken away? March passed. April passed. Now, uh, uh, one preliminary that I had not mentioned was Baba's mother, her name was Isharama. And the woman's day amongst the devotees is 6th May is Isharama's day. That is the day when she relinquished her body. So all over in the size circles, Isharama Day is celebrated as a woman's day. April passed. No ring. I started wondering, I am really a psychic case. <clears throat> on 5th of May, on the eve of Isharama Day, uh, I came back from golf at home. I again fought it out with Baba. I said, Baba, tomorrow is Isharama Day. Please bless us. That's it. As soon as I finished and sat down for lunch, a mobile, my call, a call came to me from that pro shop, the shopkeeper. He says, sir, last year, aapka ek ring guma tha. I said, yeah, guma tha. He said, mil gaya tha. I said, nahi mila. He said, le baat kariye sab ek sab se. He handed over his telephone, mobile, to <coughs> a wing commander from the Air Force, who was also a golfer. He asked me, uh, did you lose something? I said, yes, I lost a gold ring. He says, I don't know whether it's a gold ring or not, but I found a metallic piece in the jungle somewhere. I was shooing away two or three dogs there. And that time my, my foot came on a metallic thing. And I took it home uh, yesterday. So I was just wanting to, I said, yes, if it's a metallic thing, it may be gold, it may be mine. Can I come over to your home today? I want to write, collect it right away. He said, nice, sir, I'm staying at... Uh, Jalwayu Vihars or somewhere. He said, I'm staying at such and such place. I said then, he said, come tomorrow. Now, <clears throat> when I met him next day, he also told me the story of what happened in the last two days. When he found this ring, he found it was something interesting with, you know, you couldn't make out whether it's gold or metal. It was filled with muck, filled with grime, filled with dust, filled with mud and everything. You could hardly make it. It was a flat piece. He took it home. And, and he washed it when he was having a bath and he felt that there was an ohm written on it. He was amazed. He cleaned it further and he found that it seemed to be a gold one, but a flat piece. He asked his wife, he said, look, I found a gold, this thing. She said, oh, interesting. 
He said, see, I played golf so nicely and God has given me a gift for my today's game. She saw it. She said, there's an Om written on it. He said, yes, we are all believers of Om. So that's why he's given it to us. That lady happened to be a Baba's devotee. Divinity came into play. She said, no, you cannot keep it with you. This belongs to somebody else. I suggest you keep it in our family mandir, in the mandir room. And tomorrow morning when you go for golf, you take it with you. That is how the next day when he met me, he brought this flat piece of metal called gold with Om written on it. I was very happy. I gave 5,000 rupees to him. He said, I don't want 5,000 rupees. You please donate it as uh, feeding the poor or for medical aid or for giving water to the poor people wherever you want. I don't want it. I brought that home. I cleaned it. I washed it. I, with being a science student, being a technical person, I brought it back to shape and I wore it. It is now with me. Now, what does this say? Implicit faith in God. Uh, I thought I, just a minute. Yeah. Actually, I've already skipped this, which I should have read. Yes, I'll just read out the one paragraph which I read uh, at four o'clock while waiting for the session to start. I'll just read it because it makes a lot of sense. After having found the ring, an impossible became possible. Faith and trust won over worldly logic. Perseverance and self-confidence won over the worldly wise. Love and dedication to God proved to be the winning factor. I knew Baba was in me, next to me and around me. He was my father, my mother, my friend, my philosopher, my guide. How could he disown me? No, never. If we love God, he will never forsake us. He, see, he seeks the love of his devotees as much as we devotees seek his love for us. It cannot be a one-one, it cannot be a one-way equation between God and us. It has to be a, it has to be a it has to be a win-win situation. We are most welcome to fight and quarrel with him, but laced with love. I would hold on to his, on to he responding to my prayers. I would hold on to his statue and not let him sleep under my pillow until he pulled his cheeks and chin and demanded my ring to come back to me. I said so in my heart. I said in whispers and I said it loud, the way a child would to his mother throwing tantrums and finally the mother too with all the love in her gives in. So did Swami. So did Baba. All that fighting that I did, I want, I want it back, I want it back and finally I got it back. What else would you expect than this divinity at play? Now, uh, uh, these are the only ones because I was told by quarter to eight, between quarter to eight and eight, I should finish. I am well on time, except for there are just four or five lessons which I would like to share my thoughts with you. Thoughts which I'd like to share with you. All these are based on my conversations with Baba. One is focus on one God. I did not go to any mandir for any God to another to give my ring back. During one of our several interviews, he explained to my mother, home ka mandir simple rakho with less clutter. You see, this happened during an interview. He, he asked somebody, tum kisko believe karta hai? Somebody said Krishna. He asked the other one, somebody said Swami, you. The third one said, pehle Swami Shirdi Baba, abhi aap. So he said, look, I don't want you to change your gods. Today you are with me, tomorrow you go to here, third year. Just believe in God and God. Now, uh, at that stage, my mother had asked, yes, I think it was my mother or it was my wife, at that stage had asked, Swami, hamare paas, aapka kitna sara photo aata hai? He said, he asked another person in the interview, tumhara mandir mein kitna photo hai? 
said, Swami, my Pa Shiva ka hai, my Pa Zebi hai, my Zbata ka hai. And he said that my mandir has got seven or eight or nine devotees there. Baba said, tum to clutter kar diya, tum mera kaise, tum, how can you, how can you meditate on your God? When you got so many food images of gods in your mandir, you will get uh, cluttered, your mind will get cluttered. The moral story that he made a mention that time was that our mandirs at home should be simple, should be focused, focus on your deity, whoever it is. And that is just one picture that is required and not more. Because the moment you got more of them, even when you are looking at Baba, when you are looking at your divinity and you bound to be looking to the left and right and see, oh, is a little bit of Oh, that, that is Lord Krishna, that is Lord Rama. This is Shiva, this is Brahma, this is Christ, this is Bala. So where is your meditation gone? You have just gone to say hi to Baba, just shake hands, hi, and then walked away and got on to your work. He said, that is not correct. Keep your mandirs simple and focused. The next one that I've got it written on a piece of paper here is that during an interview, I asked him regarding my insomnia. Ha! Ah, that's something very interesting. I've spoken to one or two people who are sitting here at this moment and listening for them is going to be a repeat. I, at that time, I had some problems. I was not, I couldn't sleep much. So I asked Baba, okay, Baba, uh, this happened after my mother had passed. My wife was, I think, still with me. Yes, she, just about a year before she passed away too. So I asked Baba, okay, Baba, insomnia ka ke kya dwai lena chahiye, kya karna chahiye, vibhuti lega hum? He said, Tumko neen kyo nahi aata? I said, Swami, pata nahi. He said, Tum TV dekhta? I said, Sab, Swami, TV dekhta hai, lekin usko off karne ke baad, mein pandha mint relax karta hai, phir sota hai. So he looked at me, he smiled, and then he said, I'll read it out what he said, Om Dhwani se bhaut shanti milta hai. Now, I could not click on. I looked at him with a blank face, but I registered what he said. Om Dhwani se bahut shanti milta hai. I was confused. Then again he looked at me in that interview and he said, Gayantri Mantir se vi bahut shanti milta hai. Then I said, oh, I have found it. Eureka. I have understood what Baba is saying. I understood him that Gayatri Mantir and Om Dhwani are the best way to put you to sleep. That was a good six years back, just before my wife passed, seven years back. Since then, Gayatri Mantra puts me to sleep every day. The moment I switch off the light, I switch on the Gayatri Mantra on my mobile, keep it next to my pillow. And I don't know how much time it takes me to sleep, but somewhere next day, early morning, I switch off the mobile. It uh, has carried on being charged. The Gayatri Mantra was played, maybe it's been played about 108 times. In about 15 to 20 times of Gayatri Mantra, I go to sleep and it's carrying on 365 days into seven years. If not Gayatri Mantra, just to break the so-called monotony, at times I listen to the Om Dhwani. I listen to Om Dhwani and that too puts me to sleep. A food for thought for you, an issue of introspection to you. Think it over. If you feel that you have a problem, let your uh, switch off your TV, play Gayatri Mantra or play Om Dhwani or any of the recitals of hymns in case you are a Christian or whatever. Ardas for the Sikh community, whatever, it puts you to sleep. I sleep very comfortably, touch wood, touch uh, Swami's feet, Baba's feet. I sleep comfortably within five to seven recitations of Gayatri Mantra. A serious introspection to you. One more interesting, my conversations with Baba, along with my wife and my uh, wife and my children, Ashish and Pooja too. I once asked, no, my wife, I think, yeah, it was my wife asked him, Swami, how does he, that's Baba, how do you manifest yourself, especially when your devotees are far away, somebody is in Hong Kong, somebody is in America, somebody is in South Africa, wherever. He said, he said, he is never far away. He looked at me and he said, I'm never far away from anybody. You call me and I'm there. Distance is immaterial to him, he said. I asked him, Swami, then how do you manifest yourself? Are you just leaving it to a man's imagination that Baba is in front of me? 
a very uh, a very silly question to ask <clears throat> but this was quite some time back he explained that i manifest myself as your conscience now here is his letters in gold he says i you don't have to see me but i am inside you you do anything wrong your conscience will hurt you even if you go to rape a person you go to murder a person you don't to do anything that you want to a person i will click a bell inside you as your your conscience and i'll say ting tong don't do it don't do it don't do it he said it is me who is telling you don't do it and yet you are so obstinate you say never mind god please be in my heart let me go and kill the person he says no i manifest myself as your conscience and your conscience you will find from your experience always tells you what is good and what is bad conscience pricks you similarly he said unfortunately when you do something good your conscience makes you feel elated but you feel ye maine kiya hai and when there's a failure in life oh baba is not in my, my or then that time you say that i was unfortunate i was unlucky he says no your conscience had told you don't do it you did it and now you reap the effects of it a serious food for thought please think it over okay one last experience of shivratri which was just 10 days back uh hi varsha good morning sir <laughs> yes varsha okay now here's something very interesting uh just 15 days back i received a telephone call that there is quite a lot of demand for my books from uh, geeta anjali mandir so i went there i went there along with my editor dr dema ramachandran both of us went in the morning and with pooja my daughter in the evening so in the morning when we went there uh she said okay let the first book that we are going to sell let us keep it inside the mandir and uh, that's the same mandir where vibhuti came earlier to so i uh, i went and put one uh, we took permission from uh, the lady who many who locks the mandir and opens the mandir and cleans the mandir and whatever i kept a book in front of swami's in front of baba's chair and i came back and laid out my books on the table i laid out about 30 books on the table and the first book i kept it there we left the book there the sale started and towards the later half of the day somebody came running to me ke sir aapne ek book wahan lagaya hai mandir mein i said yes he said sir usko mein bahut vibhuti aa gaya now varsha can you show us the book yes now here you are can you enlarge can you increase the size okay those of you who are on your Uh, uh, mobiles can see it. You can see now. This is how I had kept it in the mandir, uh, not here. I had kept it in the mandir, which is just behind my table, just behind the wall of the table. I took a tray from them. I put my book. I kept it in front of the chair, and I left it there. And thereafter, after some time, they told me that there's a lot of vibhuti there. What you see at this moment is lots of vibhuti. i preserved this book in my mandir i kept all the vibhuti and this book is not for sale by the time the day finished 21 books had already got uh, already were taken over in fact the owner the, the not the owner the custodian he told me ke sir i want 10 books and what i will do is actually it was based on my editor's suggestion ramas rama are you there Yes, I'm there. I'm oh there. yes, you are there. Okay, yeah. So the, based on the suggestion by Rama, that what we can do is you keep ten books with you, and whenever somebody gives donations, say somebody gives ten thousand rupees, along with the slip, pays along with the slip, uh, the receipt, you offer him one book to read, because this book is nothing but divinity at play, which happens with each and every human being. Those ten books are also with him. this was the last of the miracle that i had 10 days back the vibhuti is preserved for posterity i will not open it this book will go to my uh, successors pooja and ashish along with the first book on which vibhuti came at puttaparthi when i had offered my manuscript there about which i spoke to you earlier one book will go to my son ashish and one book will go to my daughter pooja 
ladies and gentlemen i this was the last of the things that i had i said 8 o'clock i finished one minute earlier it is 7:59 at the moment <clears throat> thank you so much colonel it was really wonderful all the miracles that you have narrated it really shows us that divinity is at play thank you so much and now if there are any questions kindly do ask those questions we are already at 8 o'clock so unmute yourself yes sir was that the gold ring which has been shown in this picture yes uh, yeah the question is is that a gold ring yes can you see now in one at one time in an interview i have given a gold ring there is a separate narrative of this in the book on um, this one is a silver ring there is another story of it having been lost in usa and i have found it there miracles are in abundance divinity is always playing with us in with you as much as with me thank you yes any other questions we don't have any questions so uh, uh, next slide varsha uh, before sajini takes on since you said since you asked for questions there are no questions but as a feedback whenever i give a talk there are lots of questions and queries which come there after i'm sure out of the 30 of you who are listening in there would be a lot of queries i got my mobile number as well as my uh, email id here you are most welcome to get in touch with me similarly in case you want the book also from me uh, you just give me a tinkle or you uh, contact me on my whatsapp uh, yeah you contact me on my whatsapp give me your address i will sign a, a autograph a copy and send it to you the very next day sajni ji could so you pass on in the group uh, his number and email id please i yeah, like just to take it it's coming on now if you could take it down oh, it's on the slide it's on the slide it's not coming for me it is not coming for you it's an old phone i think so okay okay we'll give it to you later Thank and you, yes. uh, any other questions anyone sir we've not had uh, much of uh, you know experience with baba uh, i've seen him but not much of an experience you think we can still uh, become a devotee and the miracles can be at play you feel of course have... why not the last two three miracles i have told you about is not when baba was in his human form in puttaparthi these have happened over the last 10 years or so 8 to 10 years this vibhuti coming 10 days back it's a miracle is the divinities at play baba's blessings are always there to a devotee okay sir you see the question is not becoming a devotee of baba but becoming a devotee of your own divinity own divinity so okay God is yeah in your heart, okay. he he is your divinity just carry on remain focused on him okay thank you thanks any other questions no that rubbish i request you to kindly propose the vote of thanks followed by the loka samasta thank you sachin right no channel arun malhotra that was very interesting what you uh, took us through your journey was most interesting i feel um, really your family is a blessed family to have experienced whatever miracles you experienced um i think in the process of you sharing it uh, it was a really nice heart to heart um, sharing from your end um i think the what we got was really that you know if one has that um, faith and surrender in the divine then one one will experience the guidance and the connection that the divine is always there with us you know he's within us in our awareness whatever you shared um, through your uh, you know personal experiences like the, the la paloma incident the resurrection uh, of that um, seek boy of materializing of the ring um and you know it is it is a very strong indication of the power of faith what also stood out was when you said um, you know baba baba does not um, discriminate between when you indicated that baba doesn't discriminate between different denominations it doesn't matter whether you worship krishna or rama or shiva or jesus or allah but um, the idea is whatever day uh, you know puja room whatever deity you have at home keep the puja room simple and make sure you have a good focus when you you know either do pray either when you pray or you meditate 
and uh, it is amazing that you have listened to the gayatri mantra or the om dhvani uh, for uh, you know every day for 7 years that is really amazing and i can imagine the kind of blessing you would have had uh, subliminally uh, you know hearing these chants even in your as you doze off to sleep that is amazing so um really uh, you underline that what you you reap what you sow and when baba was asked how do you appear in far off lands he said i'm never far away i'm in your conscience and that is really where the divine sits so uh, the ultimate message that you have given us today very powerfully was power of surrender and faith the, that is where you will see the divinity at play so thank you so much colonel for that and on that note um let us all uh, let us all sit straight with our back neck and head aligned for the local samasta in these times of trouble in different parts of the world of this pandemic and countries now searching ahead in development too let us reach out to our communities through our prayers through this local samasta let us pray for the well being of all may peace and wisdom and the divine prevail in the hearts and minds of our world leaders and all those who are our community leaders as well take a deep breath let go let us connect with all other people all other beings around us as we chant the loka samasta loka samasta सुखीनो लोका समस्ता सुखीनो भवन्तु, लोका समस्ता सुखीनो भवन्तु, ओम शांति 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 ओम तत्सत thank you ramesh thank you everyone for being with us this evening and we look forward to having you every thursday next thursday we have someone from coimbatore who will be speaking sakina machi and she's talking on face yoga and if you follow what she's saying you will definitely look much younger so do join us next week do tell people about it also so thank you once again everyone thank you colonel it was a wonderful session and uh, i'm reading your book i will get back to you once i've completed it give me your seat so now thanks all right so goodbye everyone all the best thank you very much for listening to me ladies and gentlemen thank you